All right, in this lecture, I'm reviewing how to do simple manometer type word problems. It is my hope that you can see that the manometer problems that we've been doing to determine the pressure of a gas, either above or below the atmospheric pressure or the height of the column being supported in a closed tube or some combination, uh, can be observed through problems. Okay, it's very important that these uh, ideas uh, come up in word problems. So in any case, let's start with number two. I know I've probably done this in class, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't know how high in meters must a column of water be able to exert a pressure equal to that 760 millimeters column of mercury that Torricelli came up with. So I want to know, if I had a tube, how long would it have to be to uh, produce an atmospheric pressure of 760 coming out of it? Or how much, okay, or how long, or how high, I should say, can water be supported in some kind of column, okay, by atmospheric pressure? We know that that height, okay, right now is 760 millimeters of mercury, which we all know now is a tor because of Torricelli, so they're equivalents. So we know that 760 uh, millimeters of mercury can be supported if you measure the mercury. Now, I know mercury is not red, it's a silver color, but I'm just putting that as a contrast. So this height here is 0 0.760 meters, okay? Uh, I shouldn't capitalize meter, but I did anyway. So 0.76 meters. I want to know the height that this would be if it was water, meaning if I want to make a barometer and I want to use water, how high must mount my tube be? Well, I know that mercury is very dense, okay? It's 13.6 grams per milliliter. I know water has a density that's equal to one gram per milliliter. So that means that mercury is 13.6 times more dense than my water. Shouldn't that mean that water is gonna be 13.6 times higher? Okay, since it is that much less or that less of a mass compared to, to mercury? Right? If I had a gram of mercury, it's 13.6 grams. Okay? If I have water, it is one gram. Remember, pressure is a force over an area. So by mercury being so much more heavier, 13.6 per same volume, remember it's a measure of volume in a tube, okay, then uh, it makes sense that mercury is going to be 13.6 times smaller that can be supported. Or if you're dealing with water, it's going to be 13.6 times higher because of this differential. It's an inverse relationship. What does that mean? Well, as the height of your column that can be supported by mercury increases, okay, so as the height goes up, the density must do what? Go down, right? As the height decreases, like for mercury, its density increases. That's an inverse relationship. Now, as we're going to see, inverse relationships will become height times density equals some constant. We'll get to that. I don't care if you don't understand that yet. So inverse relationships. Now, if you can also make it this way, height equals 1 over density, right? As the density increases, being on the denominator, what does it do to your height? Well, it makes it smaller, and that's how that works. So height is equal to 1 over density. So if you solve for it, density comes to the other side, and then you get h times density equals something over here. We'll talk about those things. But essentially, we have height times density. So let's get rid of some of this. Make some room. So what all I'm going to do here to convert my mercury into water is I'm going to take very simple inverse relationship height times density equals height times density. And the reason why this is nice is because if this goes up as much as this goes down, then that means that this side will equal this side. They have to equal, right? If if this goes up, then this goes down, and this goes up the same way. Because these are inversely related, the amount total on this side has to equal the amount total on that side. Right? 
Okay, and we'll talk more about that. But it's a nice example of an inverse relationship. So, height times density. Well, the height that we have is 760 millimeters of mercury. The density is 13.6 grams per milliliter. And we want to know the height when the density of water, which is 1 gram per milliliter. Okay, solve for H. Okay, well, this value is going to go below 1 gram per milliliter. And as you could probably guess, these units cancel. And you're left with 760 times 13.6. And this gives me 1,336 millimeters. Of course, converting to meters, it's 10.366 meters. Looks like 760 has two significant figures. So it looks like I'm about, if it was a test question, 10 meters. So the reason why they couldn't build a pump for the Duke of Tuscany with a suction um, uh, handle, they couldn't make it above 10 meters because that is only what atmospheric pressure will support water. Now, of course, water would be a higher tube. By what degree? By how much? 313.6. That's the difference here. Okay? So that's how you convert a column of water or other liquids into a mercury or take mercury into a column of another liquid. That's the converting factor. That's what we're going to do here. And we're going to put this to use in number three. Number three, what's the pressure in atmospheres on the body of a diver if he is 25 feet below the surface of water when the atmospheric pressure of the surface is 0.97? So I'm going to draw myself a diver. Don't laugh at my drawings. I think I'm going to draw myself here. Yep. Okay, grew my hair out for that summer. Now I'm diving below a surface. Now I am approximately 25 feet below the surface. And I also have a pressure pushing on the surface of 0.97 atmospheres. Well, what's the pressure on me? Well, not only do I have the pressure pushing down, I have the pressure of 25 feet of water. So I'm going to have to add the pressure of the atmosphere pushing on the liquid plus the pressure of what this fluid is above me. So the pressure, it's kind of like a manometer. In fact, it really is a manometer question. Think with me for a second. An open tube uh, manometer. You've got 0.97 atmospheres pushing down. And we also have 25 feet of water pushing down. So where do I get the water? Well, this would be like the water in this manometer. And the difference here in height, okay, is 25 feet. So the person in the middle swimming, which is me, Got to get my hair there. What does he feel? What does this gas feel? Or what do I feel? I feel not only the height of the column, but also 0.97. So we're relating this problem to a manometer. So all I got to do is make sure these guys are in the same units. Now, feet of water is not a pressure unit. I want to convert this to a pressure unit. So how can I make the length of water? Well, I'm going to use somehow convert this into millimeters of mercury, which is equal to tor. So the way to convert a fluid that's not mercury and height being supported, well, guess what? Height times density equals height times density. Yeah, very simple. So before I can get to a height that makes some sense for me, I'm trying to convert this height in water, which is not a pressure unit, into height in mercury. So the first thing, convert to 25 feet into millimeters. And the reason why I want it millimeters is because I want to convert to millimeters of mercury, which is a pressure unit. Okay? So, take my 25 feet. I want to get rid of feet. Hope they don't smell. And for every one feet, I should say foot there, but hey, uh, I have 12 inches. Remember we did these kind of conversions a couple months ago? Well, a couple months ago, uh, seven weeks ago, I guess. And then for every one inch, 
is 2.54 centimeters. Okay. And now I'm in centimeters. And the last step, convert to millimeters. I know I could have combined that there, but I'm just making it nice and straightforward. For every one centimeter, there's 10 millimeters. You didn't think those problems made any real uh, use? Well, we're using it right here. So when I put this in my calculator, noting that everything cancels except for millimeters, I get 7620 millimeters of water, which is still not a pressure unit. Okay, I got 7.6 meters of water height. That's how much water. So I just converted 25 feet to 7.62 meters. In this case, I kept it in millimeters. But I want to convert this height in water, which is now 7,620 7, millimeters of water into millimeters of mercury. Now that's easy. Okay, height times density equals height times density. So what's my height? Well, I'm going to take the water height, which is 7,620. Okay, I'm going to leave the units out because I'm missing some space here. The density of water is 1. I want the height for mercury. Of course, the density is 13.6. Solve for your height. Well, doesn't it make sense the height's going to be 13.6 times smaller for the more dense mercury? Yeah. So when you solve for H, H is equal to 7620 divided by 13.6. All we're doing is making it what? Smaller because the mercury is heavier. You need a lot less of it okay, for the same pressure it's providing. So when I do that math, I'm dividing by 13.6, and some people see that right away. Okay, what do I get? Let's make this a different color because I can. Magenta. So this gives me a height of uh, 560. Okay, we'll just 0.29. That's Tor. So this 25 feet is really 560.29 Tor. Now, the question is, this is 0.97 atmospheres. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert 0.97 atmospheres into Tor. And then, of course, I'm going to add them together because that's, remember, that's the manometer problem. This is pushing down. This is pushing down with its weight. The total pressure I feel is both of these. So I'm just going to convert here. So 0.978 atmospheres. And this is something you should be able to do. I'm going to get rid of atmospheres. For every one atmosphere, how many Tor? 760 Tor. These are equivalent. You need to know that. Okay, get rid of my atmospheres and 760 times 0.97 and I get 737. Just changing my ink, 737.2 Tor, which is that equivalent right there. So I'm going to add that to my what? 560.29 Tor. Why am I adding? I know that this value, the weight of this water, which is 25 feet, is equivalent to 560.29 Tor. That's this number here. All right? Don't get lost in your problem. That's this right here. And this pressure is the pressure of the atmosphere that I'm pushing down here. So this value plus this value. What am I adding? Because they're going the same direction. Both of these forces are acting upon me. The weight of the water plus the weight of the air, if you want to think of it that way. In any case, it's a manometer problem. We add them together. And what do we get? Well, let's try 560.29. And I get uh, approximately 1297.49 Tor. I'm going to sig fig this out. Looks like two sig figs. Okay, so 1300 Tor is my answer. Now I could convert this to atmospheres, couldn't I? Right? If 1300 Tor is my answer, and what's the equivalent? For every 760 Tor, there's one ATM. 
right? So 1300 divided by 760 gives me 1.7 atmospheres. These, these, this is acceptable and so is this. They are equivalents. They equal each other, just different units. But the key to the problem was noticing that I had to convert the height of this water into height of mercury because that is a pressure unit. Water height is not. And we got there through what? We got there through height times density. Okay? So that's how we did that problem there. Number four is what I'm asking you to do also. Number four is very straightforward. Except now we don't have water. We have dibutyl phthalate, which is a non-volatile liquid. It means it doesn't evaporate. It has a density not of one. Density is 13.6. So assuming the maximum atmospheric pressure is 760, pushing down, tor, what would be that minimum height of a barometer based on dibutyl phthalate? So what they're saying is, we know that a mercury barometer okay, is measured by 760 millimeters of mercury. That's how much our barometer would support, or that's how much the, the, the column of war, uh, liquid could be supported here by atmospheric pressure. Okay, what they're saying is, well, what would be the height if it was dibutyl uh, phthalate? It's in the liquid. So if you haven't already guessed it, we're going to use a very simple formula, height times density equals height times density. Height times density. And why does this work? Because of the ratio of the densities. Is the ratio of the volumes is similar, the masses are different. So take our height, which we know to be 760 uh, millimeters of mercury. And we know the density is 13.6 grams per milliliter. What is the new height? of this new liquid if its density is 1.05. Now notice it's not water, it's a different compound, so you need to be given the density. So instead of being 13.6 times bigger, it's, it's going to be a little different because it's 1.05. So, so H is equal to, doing my algebra, 1.05 grams over milliliters. Okay, just going to get rid of this because I can. And we put this in our calculator. So 760 times 13.6 divided by 1.05. And I get a big number. It should be big. Why? Because dibutyl phthalate is so much less dense. So therefore, there's going to be a much larger height of liquid that can be supported because it's just a lighter material which means what? 760 millimeters of mercury has basically the same mass as 9,843 millimeters of dibutyl phthalate. That's how it works. It's going to take a lot more volume. Again, higher the density, lower, okay, I'm sorry, higher the, higher, um, uh, I should say this, lower the hi uh, height, the higher the density which means lower the density, higher the height. If this guy is decreasing as much as this increases, well, this has to equal this value. And that's called an inverse relationship. So going back to sig figs, it's like 2 is my limit. So 9, 8, 0, 0. Okay, minimum height in millimeters of, uh, millimeters in this case, of dibutyl phthalate. So we sell for, okay, and they asked for didn't ask for a unit, so that would be your answer. Okay, and that's all I wanted you to do on this worksheet so far.